All right, welcome. My name is Ryan Holger with a National Excelsior Company and Temperature Equipment Corporation. Uh, this month's webinar is on Hydronic System Solution Software. Uh, this is a free software package that we've been using for several years here. Uh, I'll explain how to get it for free if you like. Uh, and then we're actually, for the most part, going to live demo the software as opposed to me showing you a bunch of boring PowerPoint slides. Uh, but I got a couple slides here at the beginning just to kind of introduce it to everybody. All right, so the current version of the software, if, you, if you've used it before, the current version is uh, version 7.1.1. .1. If you already have it on your machine and you open it, it will install the new version. If you don't have it, there's two different ways you can get the software for free. There may be more, but two that I know of. One is you can talk to your Takeo rep, and he should be able to give it to you on a disk if you like. Uh, the other way is to download it from the MultiAqua website. MultiAqua is one of the software sponsors. Um, you should be able to see their... Uh, their website up on my screen right now. Um, if you go to the website, which is multiaqua.com, and you click on, we well, scroll down a little bit here, uh, and then you click over here on the bottom left side, Hydronic System Software. Uh, it'll bring up a little web form that you can fill out with basic, you know, info, name, address, company, etc., and then it'll let you download the software for free. So if you don't already have it and you want to get it, that's where you could do it. MultiAqua.com, over on the left-hand side, click on the software icon, and then fill out the basic uh, web, web form here. All right, so we'll go ahead and close that. We don't really need that for now. All right, <clears throat> the reason it's free is because there's lots of sponsors of the software. Um, but don't let that hinder you from thinking it's some kind of sales thing. It's definitely a design tool. Uh, there's very little marketing involved in it, um, other than some stuff I'll show you here. Um, but there are numerous manufacturers involved. I think there's 36 manufacturers involved now, including several that we work with, like Takeo and Utica and Multiaqua and Slantfin and some of those folks. There's also several uh, universities involved um, that, that, that help sponsor and uh, you know, design this software package. Um, there's lots of stuff you can do with it. I'll try to demo a lot of it for you today, at least what I can do within an hour. Um, but we can do chill water systems, hot water systems. We can have it spit out Excel sheets with equipment schedules and bills of material and things like that, um, all that kind of stuff. The free version of this software is the hydronic portion of it. This software does you know, a lot more than that. Um, it, it's quite robust. <clears throat> but the, the part that's free is the hydronic part. So hot water systems, we can do terminals, radiant floors, radiators, fan coils, boiler systems, heat exchangers, swimming pool heating, domestic heating, chemical feed systems, anything like that. Chill water, we can do fan coils, chilled beams, air handlers, chillers, cooling towers, dry coolers, all that kind of stuff. Um, geothermal, radiant cooling, radiant heating, um, lots of you know products like that. Specialty stuff like MRI equipment. Um, and you can pretty much draw anything you want with it. This is something that I drew a couple of years ago with this software that wasn't inherently built into the software, a geothermal chiller, um, reverse, reverse valve chiller, um, but was able to force it into the software and get it all to work and still size my pumps and everything for me. The software is pretty cool in that it'll actually select your pumps, size your pumps, size your expansion tanks, valves, all that kind of stuff. But like with every software, it's you know garbage in, garbage out. So you have to give it good data when you're putting stuff in, and it'll help you size and select pieces of equipment to, to use on the job and piping sizes and things like that. <clears throat> the software itself is, uh, is developed and, and run by a company called HVAC Solution. Their website is hvacsolution.com. Um, they do have a support 800 number you can call if you have questions. I can also help you if you got questions. Uh, the Takeo guys are pretty good at it too if you call your Takeo rep. Uh, if you go to the HVAC Solution website, it looks something like this. Not something like this. This is the website. Um, and there's lots of stuff and things you can click on here. And you'll see that you can download the full version of the software here and buy it, or a trial version of the full software. But if you want the free one, you need to get it from Takeo or from the Malta Aqua folks. Um, the, uh, the full version of the software has more than hydronic in it. It does hydronic, it does steam, it does rooftops, air handlers, duct design, all that kind of stuff. But the free version we're going to talk about today is just the uh, hydronic version. If you click on tutorials up on the top side there uh, of that website, I'm showing you on the screen right now, uh, that website there's all kinds of videos for specific things that you can check out um, 
to, to learn about how to use in this software tricks, how to draw a radiant system, you know, things like that. So there's all kinds of little short videos you can watch of someone doing something with the software, and then you can go to your software and actually do it. Um, so that is kind of uh, kind of helpful as well. All right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to run the software and, uh, and, and show you stuff that way. If you have any questions as I'm showing you guys stuff, just type them in the question box, and I'll try to answer them as they, as they come up here. So let's just switch over real quick to the actual software. And we'll zoom it up a little bit so you guys can see. I'm not sure how fast the what I do on the screen feeds over to what you guys see. So I'll try not to go too crazy fast. That way everybody can kind of keep up. So this is what the basic software looks like. Um, just a white, whiteboard that you can start drawing on. And as you draw stuff, it starts trying to calculate what you're going to need. Um, I'm on the hydronic tab up here right now, as you can see. There are other tabs for, like I said, rooftops and air handlers and duct systems and things like that, steam systems. That's not part of this current software. So if you go to those and try to click on something, it's just going to tell you you want if you want to upgrade to the full paid package. Uh, but the free package is great for doing hydronic stuff, and you're not really limited in that regard. Uh, the only thing you really can't do with the free packages, I don't think you can export stuff to AutoCAD, which may or may not be a big deal depending on who you are. So the way I usually start drawing our projects is I start with the loads and work my way back with the terminals. Um, so the way these icons work out across the top of the screen, you have all these little icons here. And if you hold your mouse over them, it'll tell you what it is. So that's hydronic boilers. Uh, if I click on the little arrow, I can pick boilers by brand amongst the various brands that are sponsors of the software. Or I can go down to where it says no manufacturer, and I can just pick a generic one if I don't have a specific brand in mind. All right, so I've got boilers. There are solar thermal panels you can put on here, uh, although that's not very popular quite yet. But heat exchangers. Um, so this first section here is my source. Who's going to give me the heat? Um, my next section of stuff is who's going to give me my cooling. So I've got air-cooled chillers, right? And obviously there's multi ones on there, or I can pick generic ones. There's water-cooled chillers. There's dry coolers. Uh, there's heat pumps. So I got any kind of a source like that. Then I have some rejection equipment lists here, right? So I got um, cooling towers that I can pick from, or I can pick uh, from uh, from storage tanks. Then the next section is your transport stuff. So I got um, I got pumps I can work with. I got um, expansion tanks, air separators, uh, hydraulic separators, those kind of components. Uh, then I got various tank choices. I got glycol feeders. I got chemical feed systems, I got buffering tanks, um, mixing tanks, indirect water heaters, those types of things. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to apologize in advance because I do have a sore throat today, so I'm going to make sure I try to get through it without sounding like uh, someone from the Brady Bunch here. Um, then, I, then you have various different load choices you can pick from. There are some heat pump choices that you can pick, right? You got some terminal units that you can pick that are just generic, like fan coils, heat pumps, baseboard, radiators, radiant heating floors, radiant cooling, um, computer room units, chilled beams. Uh, so you can pick any kind of terminal like that. Or if you, don't, if you want to draw something at a larger scale, um, you might want to pick different devices that you might be trying to heat, like an entire swimming pool or spa or something like that. Or if you're drawing a campus out with this software, which believe it or not, you can certainly do, um, you can have different types of buildings, hospital, apartment, condo, whatever. But most of the time you'll be picking some kind of terminal. Uh, the red and blue icon one is for heating and cooling. The red icon ones are for heating only terminals, and the blue ones are for cooling only terminals. And then you got some special uh, fan coils over here, ducted and non-ducted fan coils. Um, if you want to do four pipe systems and things like that. So what I'm going to do for sake of this discussion, I'm just going to start for right now with a heating only system since it's winter time and everything like that. I'm going to pick. Let's just pick some fan coils just to make something on here. I'm going to drop one of them on the drawing here. I'm going to try to zoom up here so you guys can see it better because I'm not sure how big it looks over the, uh, over the broadcast. All right, so right now I've got a fan coil sitting here. It says I've got zero BTU, zero GPM. I have no idea what the water temps are because I didn't tell it anything yet. I can double click. Actually, first before I do that, let me double click on the white screen and that allows me to set up any parameters I want to use for the job as a whole. So I, I go down through a couple of these, you can see the name of my job, whatever I want to call it. I'm just going to call it webinar. Um, location is right here. Uh, you can pick your city data. It remembers that I like to pick Chicago, but if you want to pick something else, you can do that. Um, and if you don't want to use the built-in weather data, you want to put your own conditions in, you can just take this checkbox off 
and you can manually type in your design conditions. I'm just going to leave mine on Chicago here. Hit apply. Now it shows up over here on the top left side of my screen, webinar and location. Um, my units measure, English units in this case I have. I got some options I can pick. I can have it show grid lines on my background. I personally like the white background better, so I leave it that way. Uh, but you got some flexibility and choices there. Um, the air side doesn't really do anything because this is a hydronic only version we're working with. Same with steam. But under hydronic, I can pick some stuff. By default, this Taco load match and the Taco low flow uh, injection pumps uh, and twin T's are all default to being checked. And they're certainly fine products and you can use them. However, most of the stuff that I'm drawing is more generic and more traditional. So I have mine unchecked already. So that way it doesn't even try to try to use those. If you don't uncheck those, it'll try to put in Taco twin T's and all that kind of stuff for all of your fan coils and pumps for every fan coil. So if you don't want that, come in here and uncheck it at, on the project properties box right here. Um, piping, you can pick what kind of pipe you want to work with. So right now I got copper type L, but if there's something else I want to do this job in, I could pick that here in advance and then every piece of pipe that I put in, it would automatically default to that. Um, and if there's a certain size pipe that I don't want, like here, three and a half inch pipe is a very oddball size and probably costs more than four inch, so I have it unchecked. Uh, but if there's other ones you don't like for some reason and you don't want to use them on your job, you can uncheck them. Um, <clears throat> skip all the uh, steam stuff because that doesn't really apply to us. Um, under electrical, if you only have certain voltages available to you on your project, you can go ahead and specify that for your motors so it can't put anything on your schedule that's not available. If you don't have 460 volt, there's no reason in specifying a 460 volt motor, obviously. Uh, and then under controls, uh, I'll show you some control stuff later, but you can add some control points to these drawings as well. Um, a equipment preferences. Um, the defaults are usually fine for most of the stuff that you're doing. For example, a fan coil for cooling is set up at 8067 because that's where every fan coil is AHRI tested. So that's a good place to start. But if you want to change some of your assumptions, you can do that on, on here if you want to. Um, you can change some of your annotations and color schemes. For the most part, I would leave all, all those the same. Um, the coordination file options, you definitely want to come in on this one. And you have to check these boxes. For whatever reason, if you don't check these boxes, you can't run these reports, even though you're telling it to run those reports. So it's very weird. So you might as well have them all checked. You're only going to run the ones you want anyway. Um, and the main ones that you're going to run are going to be the bill materials and the equipment scheduling. But you want to have them checked on here. The ones that are grayed out, you cannot check because those are not available in the free software. So if you want to export it to CAD or something like that, that's not available unless you were to upgrade your software. Not a big deal for most of us. And then over here under coordination, check them all again. All right, so jumping back to our drawing, I threw this fan coil on here. If I double click on the fan coil, I got a list of things that I can do. Right now it's a heating only fan coil, so all the cooling data column is blanked out. I put my heating load in. So let's just say for sake of argument that this is a 40,000 BTU coil. Great, I put in 40,000. It's going to try to design it for a delta T of 20 degrees, which is a traditional hydronic design, and that's fine. However, I personally like to put in my entering and leaving water conditions, as some of you probably do as well. So if I click that box, it asks me, basically asks me if I'm an idiot or not, and I say, yeah, I'm an idiot, but I want to go ahead and manually do it anyway. So I'm going to put mine in at 180 and 160 for this particular project, which is still a 20 degree delta T, but it's going to lock it into those particular temperatures for this scenario. If I was doing a condensing boiler, maybe I would lock it in at something less than that. Uh, if I know the pressure drop of the fan coil that I would like to use, I can put it in here. If not, it's going to make an assumption. In this case, it's assuming five feet of pressure drop. Once I know the exact fan coil I want to use, I would want to come in and change this, because obviously this will affect the size of the pump that it's going to tell me to use. Uh, under description, um, it's got automatic tagging, so this is number one. It'll When I put another one down, it'll be number two, number three, number four, etc. If I want to custom name it, I can do that. I can check that box, say it's an existing building, and this guy is you know, fan coil 19 that I want to draw on here for a tenant or something. I can go ahead and do that if I want to. Or I could just leave it the way it was and not, and not check it. Um, let's see. What else? Um, usage, medium, hydronic type, uh, load heating, hydronic. All right, so under hydronic, you'll see there's one for glycol. It's going to assume we're using straight water. If you are using a glycol-based system, you can check this box and pick the type of glycol and concentration that you have. However, 
Um, what I would recommend is that you do not do this on the fan coils because it would be a pain in the butt to go change every fan coil. But once you put down your boiler or your chiller or whatever your heating source is, in that time I would tell the chiller that it's got, say, 30% propylene glycol, and he'll push that information automatically to all my fan coils so I don't have to do it um, on each one. So I'll leave a blank on this one in these cases. Uh, nothing else really that I'm going to change here. Um, it's all just you know kind of the same stuff over and over here. If I have a specific manufacturer that I want to use, uh, I'll just call it manufacturer ABC. I can put that in here. And if it's a specific model, I can put that in here if I know what I already want to use. If not, it'll just leave that part blank. I can put dimensions and stuff on here too if I want to. Additionally, if I know what this thing is going to cost me, I can add it in here. Uh, and also, I didn't show you on the main um, project screen, I can add in costs of labor. And this will actually do an, a labor estimate for you, too, if you wish. But I don't think most guys are doing it that way. They're mostly doing it for design. I say, okay. Now it tells me, okay, you got a 40,000 BTU a unit with 180 degrees supply water, 160 return. So based on those conditions, I know that you're going to need 4.1 GPM in order to get the 40,000 BTUs to this guy. Now I can put down more fan coils or other types of terminals if I want, or I can copy this guy, which is what I'm going to do. I click on him once, and I can either hit Control-C, or I can right-click and hit Copy, and I can come over here, and I can hit Paste, and I can put another one down, and then I can hit Paste and hit another one down. All right, so now i got three of these guys. Uh, I can make them all you know, lined up and pretty, whatever I want. If I highlight them all at the same time and right-click on them, um, I can come down here and say space them evenly top to bottom, great. And I can say align them all on the left, great, and now it looks nice and clean. If some of them are different sizes, that's fine. I can just double click on them and only change the things that I care about. Let's say this guy is 60,000 BTUs, fine. And let's say this guy down here is 100,000 BTUs, great, fine. So I can do that. And obviously you can see he's changing the GPM for me because he knows with that given water temperature, and that requested amount of BTUs, I need to get a certain flow to each one of those guys. So for right now, we'll just do the, the three fan coil example. Um, you can keep going down, you know, unlimited amount of paper here. You can draw hundreds of these if you want on here. But for today's purposes, to keep it simple, I think you get the idea. Uh, so now what I usually do is I put down my heating source. So in this case, I'm going to keep it traditional, and I'm going to pick a boiler. And I will just pick what I want to pick. Let's see, let's pick a condensing boiler. All right, so I'm dropping my condensing boiler on here. Uh, I'm actually going to right click on him and rotate him. Oh, I don't want to do that. I didn't want to rotate him. I wanted to mirror him. So that way my connections are on the other side for this example so my drawing looks cleaner. All right. Ooh, and that's my condensate line on there that it's already got on there for me. All right, so now the next thing that's easiest to do is to draw in all the piping and then start adding all the pumps and things like that. Right now it's telling me that the boiler is zero BTUs because he has no idea what I'm going to connect to it. So up here on the top, there's this little squiggly uh, line up here. That's the piping line. I'm going to click on him. Now my cursor has changed to an arrow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm basically the easiest way to draw it is to draw it leaving the boiler and going to where it's going to go. So I'm, everywhere I click my mouse is going to be a piping connection or it's going to be an elbow. So if I click there, I connected my pipe, elbow, and how about I just go make a loop around this guy here. I'll make a loop around my three zone building. Let's go pick up all my zones. I'm going to you know, give myself some space up here to draw some accessories in later on and connect them. All right. So now he's all connected there. I've got to connect my fan coils, right? So let's just take this guy, connect him to the supply, connect him to the return. Now you notice he made those dotted lines. The dotted lines are saying, I don't know what you're doing, Ryan. You've got this bunch of pipe that you don't really need. Don't buy that pipe. It's not connected to anything. But I did connect the first fan coil on here. So now he's telling me on the right-hand side, the boiler needs to be 100,000 BTUs, uh, and it needs to be 160-degree water. As I connect more fan coils, he's going to keep increasing the size to get them all covered. Alright, so now he's 200,000 BTUs, basically all my zones on there. If I hit escape, I get my mouse cursor back. I'm going to click on this dotted line because I don't need that piece of pipe and I'm going to remove it. 
Right, so there's my basic drawing of my system. I need 200,000 BTUs, 20 GPM of 180 degree water. So now what I can do if I like is I can come over here and I can click on the pumps. And let's pick a pump. I can pick just about any kind of pump that I want, vertical or horizontal, inline, split case, frame mounted. Uh, this is small, so I'm just going to pick a little circulator in this case. Uh, and let's see, I want to put him on the discharge side of the boiler. Let's do this. I should give myself a little more room on this guy. Should draw some stuff in here. All right. So now I'll get my pump. Put my little circulator on here. Boom. I click them on here. And the first thing he tells me is, well, you need 20.5 GPM, Ryan, because that's how much I need to flow 200,000 BTUs worth of energy. And you need 21 feet ahead on this pump. Well, how does he know how much head I need in the pump? Well, the first thing is he's looking at these fan coils, which I use the default of five foot of pressure drop for. And he's looking at the boiler over here, which had 15 foot of pressure drop. So he's adding those together um, to get, get the total here. So 15 plus the five all the way to this last guy. What I didn't do yet is tell him how long the pipe is. He doesn't know if it's 10 feet long or a million feet long. So I actually got to go in and tell it all the pipe lengths. So if I go click on this guy, I can tell him, oh, it's zero feet. Well, that's not zero feet. It's really 50 feet. Right now, I'm from 21 to 23 feet ahead. And this one over here is probably 50 feet. And this one over here is five feet. Right? And just punch all these guys in so he knows how long the pipe is. If you're just doing this to get a nice, pretty drawing, you don't need to do this. But if you're doing it to size the pumps and the piping and so forth, then obviously these lengths are important. All right, punched in almost all my links, I think. I'm just I'm randomly punching them in, but obviously in real life, you'd be putting in links that are representative of your building. So I need 20, 26 feet ahead and 21 GPM. All right, I need an expansion system, so let's go up here and find an expansion tank. Well, actually, let's put an air separator in first because it's just easier to do that. So how about I grab an inline air separator? I'll drop him on the drawing. Let's give myself a little more room here. Oops, hang on. To draw a box around stuff and then move it more practically speaking. There we go. All right. And now let's see if we can get an expansion tank and let's do a vertical bladder and see if we can tap them into the bottom of this guy. Here, maybe we'll just do it this way. All right. So now it's telling me that I need a 12-gallon expansion tank. How does he know that I need a 12-gallon expansion tank? Well, he knows all the length of my pipe system. He knows the uh, total uh, delta T and BTUs that I have. So when I heat up my water, he knows how much room I have to expand in the pipe and how much water I have available. Uh, so it's calculating that I need a 12-gallon expansion tank to allow all this water from my piping system to expand into that tank. Uh, and obviously the pump is downstream of the expansion tank. We're always going to pump away from the expansion tank. We never pump into the expansion tank. Uh, and then if I need anything else, I can add that on here. I mean, for the purpose of this simple drawing, I, I, I'm good to go. Um, but I can add more stuff in. We'll come back and add some stuff in here in a little bit. Um, one thing I want to do probably at this point is save my drawing. So I go to File, Save As put it on my desktop, project number one is fine, that's great. Now let's, real quick, let's run some of the reports so you can see what they look like, and then we'll come back in and draw some other stuff on here. Um, so the first thing is, if I wanted to take this drawing and put it somewhere else, um, like on a PowerPoint or a Word document or even an AutoCAD file, you can't directly import to AutoCAD unless you upgrade to the full version, but you can add an image to AutoCAD. So what one thing I could do is I could select this entire drawing, I highlight with my mouse, everything is selected. Right click on it and say copy. Then I could go somewhere, let's say to this PowerPoint, and let's say I wanted to put it on put it on this page right here. Oops. And we'll get rid of all that. Maybe I'll get rid of that. Alright. Maybe this wasn't the best way to do it. Alright. So right click, paste, and now that piping drawing is on here. I can zoom it up, whatever I wanted to do with it. Right, and I can put it in a Word document, I can put it in AutoCAD, I can put it in my reporting, whatever I wanted. 
That's one thing I can do. I can also highlight all this stuff, and I can right-click on it, and I can say, show me all the pipe sizes. So hydronic pipe annotations, show me each diameter. Boom. So now what he's telling me is, okay, I need an inch and a half pipe, leaving this 200,000 BT boiler in order to move that flow if that's required. And that's inch and a half until I get over here to this first zone. He's an inch and a quarter takeoff. And these last two guys only need an inch, right? If I had a bigger system, let's say this wasn't 40,000 BTUs, let's say it was 400. And I say okay, right? So several things happened here. His GPM requirement went up significantly from, from 4 to 41. Uh, my um, GPM of my pump went up. My boiler size went up. My pipe size went up. Right now it's two and a half inch instead of uh, what was it one and a half inch before. The two takeoffs for these zones on the left didn't change for number two and number three. They still stayed one and a quarter and one inch based on their BTUs. But the last guy who's now four hundred thousand, he went up to a two inch pipe. Right. So it's dynamically calculating these things for us as we go. I could add other stuff onto this drawing if I wanted to by right clicking on that again and going to hydronic pipe annotation. Uh, instead of diameter, I can have it show me temperatures, flows, pressure drops, things like that. Temperature might be interesting. Not so much on this job necessarily, right? It's 180 degrees going out, 160 going back. When you start having jobs with heat exchangers and multiple temperature loops uh, and stuff like that, then it becomes more interesting. Uh, if you recall this drawing that I had showed you before, that heat cool geo chiller, all the temperatures are laid on here because it is a little bit more, it's a little bit less traditional. Right, I got 130 and 110 in heating mode. I got 44 and 54 in cooling mode. The geo loop temperatures are also flipping, so it was a little bit more complicated and different. So I added the temperatures on there. A normal traditional hydronic system like this one we're showing right now, um, I may not need to do that. People may understand that 180 going out is going all the way to the fan coils. If I want to turn something off, once again, I could right click on it and I could go to delete temperatures. Now it won't show me the temperatures anymore. So it's pretty easy to change these drawings and hide various layers of things that I do and do not want to see at a given time. Hit save. Um, so now let's go and look at some of these reports right now. Uh, if I go to open coordination file, one of them I can go to is the equipment schedule. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. <clears throat> I need to take a second. He's going to open up Excel. And he's going to put a schedule in there of all the equipment that's needed. So this is an Excel. Okay, now it's on your guys' screen. Uh, down on the bottom here, I have different tabs for all the different equipment. It seems kind of silly in this case, it's got such a small system, but on bigger systems where I got five, six boilers and I got 45 radiators, it is kind of nice to have them all on their own schedule. So the first page of the schedule just tells you the design conditions, what's the name of the job, what's the location, right? So I just put in webinar in here in this case, what are my design conditions? Then I have a tab for each one of my items. So the first one is my air separator telling me I need an air separator that can handle 57 GPM, and the air separator has a three-foot uh, pressure drop. If the one I buy is actually one-foot pressure drop, or it's a hundred-foot pressure drop, or whatever it is, I could probably go, I would go back into my drawing, and I would change that, because it would change the size of my pump. pump. But in this case, this is just taking a guess. If I want to change something like that on my air separator, if I click on them, uh, I got my pressure drop right there, three feet in this case. Right, so if I had something different, like I was picking out of the catalog, I could do that. If I didn't know any better, use the three feet for a starting point. My next tab is for my boiler. Uh, I didn't pick a book manufacturer. I just put, left it generic. If I picked one, it would have listed it here. I can always type it in later if I want. ABC boiler, blah, 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 whatever. I can always type those in my, my Excel sheet whenever I want. The type of boiler I picked, condensing boiler, natural gas. <clears throat> um, my output needed is 560,000, so it's telling me I need an input of 700,000. If I know the boiler I want, I know it's efficiency percent, then I can change this input to be what's appropriate. Right? Because my drawing tells me what I need for output. It doesn't care what the input is. The input is somebody else's problem. Um, you can see he's assuming it's an 80% efficient boiler, um, which obviously wouldn't be a good condensing boiler. Um, but I could always change it right here if I have something different that I want to plug in. The flow rate that's needed, water conditions, I'm working with water, not glycol in this case, um, and my pressure drop. I got a neutralizer that's on here. That's something that's going to pop up on pretty much any condensing boiler because you have condensate that's acidic in nature. <coughs> Excuse me. I 
Condensate that's acidic in nature, um, so you do uh, have a neutralizer, so it has one scheduled out for you here, and you could obviously pick a different one if you don't want the Axiom branded one. Uh, expansion tank, I picked a full bladder expansion tank. Uh, fluids, water, it needs to be 13.5 uh, gallons for this. I'm going to start it off at 12 PSI. That could obviously be changed if I want to do something different on my job. Uh, my loads, I got three fan coils here, 40, 400,000, 100,000, and 60,000, and their associated flow rates. Um, my pump, I only got one pump in this case, right? So he's doing all the work himself. But if I had multiple pumps, they would all be listed here. Um, so it kind of uh, gives me everything as a breakdown. <coughs> All right, so that's some basic stuff that I can I can draw on here, um, and we can get more and less complicated with what if we want to. If you want to make it look differently, like if I don't want to show this big giant expansion tank on here, and I want to show you know it to be smaller, great, I can do that. I can visually make stuff look different if I want to make it look more realistic in terms of its size, just to appease people. Um, but it's just a schematic; it doesn't exactly matter. Uh, let's scroll down here and make some more space, and we can draw a few other things on here. Um, so if I want to do some stuff like let's say I want to do primary secondary piping loop so let's just take one of these fan coils drop them there drop another one here alright so I got these two fan coils and I'm going to put my boiler down it can be any boiler that I want I'll mirror it again to make it easy Alright, so now with a condensing boiler, you're probably going to want primary secondary. So what I could do is I could draw my primary loop. Doing his thing. Alright, these fan coils can all be on the secondary loop of the building. Alright, and over here my two closely spaced T's in this case. Get my supply water. Boom, 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 get rid of that extra piece of pipe. Now I got two loops, primary and a secondary. And I have to put pumps and circulators on each one of these guys. Uh, well, I don't, these are not, it's not going to work very well if I float opposite of where I need to be. Uh, let's do this. Really need this these guys this way. Alright, that's better. Now my water leaving the boiler is going in the same flow path as my primary wants to go. I got this dotted line over here. Whenever I got a dotted line in the piping, that means it doesn't know what I want to do. So I can double click on this guy. He's basically asking me, is this a heating or a cooling pipe? What's going on? Which way is this water flowing? Is it going top to bottom or bottom to top? Or could it go both? So I'm going to pick dual because on this guy he could actually go both. And now he's going to be colored green. Um, that means water can go in either direction in this case. But generally speaking, he's usually going to go bottom to top on a primary secondary of this type. Right, so I can pick that flow bottom to top. Uh, Let's see, Andrew types in a question, do the piping and pump sizing features take into account fittings, elbows, and valves? It's a great question. All right, so if you looked, uh, what's the best way to show you? Let's see if we can show you from here. Um, maybe I can't show you very well from there. Here, I'll double click on the pipe here. If you double click on any piece of your pipe, you'll see one called your pipe fitting factor, 1.5. All that's doing is adding a 50% uh, factor for your fittings, uh, which is a pretty normal industry standard. If you want to change that to something else, you can. Uh, but what it's not doing is it's not asking you, well, what kind of elbow are you going to use? Are you going to use a tight radius or a long radius elbow? Uh, and then putting a certain pressure drop in for that. It's not that sophisticated. So it's pretty much doing the math you probably would have done previously on your own. It's putting in a pipe fitting factor of 50%. So 1.5 means 
<clears throat> add a 50% extra to it. If I wanted to do 30% instead of 50%, I'd put in 1.3. Hopefully that answers the, uh, the question there. Um, and you mentioned valves too, Andrew. Uh, I'll show you how to draw some valves in here in a minute. But for the fittings, that was the, uh, that was the answer there. Uh, so in my primary secondary loop, and I would obviously need to put a pump on each loop in this case. All right, boom, there's a pump there. And I can pick different pumps. I'm just picking, when, if I just click on the pump thing up here, it's just picking the last pump that I used, in this case, a, uh, an inline circulator. If I want to pick a different pump, I can still go in and manually pick it. Right, so the GPM flow of these two pumps is identical, right? They're both 20 GPM. But the feet of head is different because they have different pressure drops on their loops. They need to move the same amount of water to get the BTUs from, from the boiler to the fan coils. Um, but the, the pressure drop is depending on the specific pipes and pressure drops of the fan coils. Right? So this fan coil is really 7 feet instead of 5 feet. That would change that. And then if I put all the links of pipe in again for these guys, which I'm not going to do every one for right now, but let's just you know, fluff it for a minute, that does change the, the two as well. Remember, pump number two on this drawing he only cares about making this loop up here, this primary loop. He doesn't care about anything on the left side of the drawing. And pump number four only cares about the left side. Um, so their feet of head will be different, but their flow rates are going to be the same in this type of uh, drawing scenario. And obviously, I would still need the expansion tank and the air separator uh, added onto here. So I'll do that just to make it correct. That is not an air separator. I mean, an uh, expansion tank. All right. But I don't need them on the left side, obviously, on the secondary loop because my expansion could be handled from one spot. Uh, Jim asks if you can add additional pressure drop for other devices and fittings. Um, I'm assuming you mean devices that we don't have on the drawing. Uh, every device you put on the drawing, fan coil, air separator, valve, whatever, you can add the pressure drop of those items. Like, for example, right here, uh, pressure drop right there, head loss. For this air separator, here's the head loss for the boiler. But there's nowhere to add in pressure drop of fittings that you don't, of stuff you don't draw. It's only stuff you do specifically draw on here. Uh, can you add stuff on? Um, not not extra items. That's where the that's where the fitting factor would come in for any extra items like this elbow right here, for example. I don't have any way to draw in the little elbow. <coughs> Um, so if I want to add some control valves, I can do that. Uh, if I, up on top here, I got a hydronic and hydronic pipe. If I click hydronic pipe, uh, the left side over here is various valves that are available to me. If I hover my mouse over them, I'll see what they are. Two-way control valve, three-way control valve, manual valve, balancing valve, check valve, uh, and so forth. I can also add strainers and things like that on here as well. All right, so if I want to add a strainer on here. See what my choices are. Uh, <clears throat> let's just pick a Y type. Drop them on there. Now my strainer is on the discharge of that boiler. Actually, I don't want the strainer on the discharge of my boiler. That's not very useful to me. I want him on the inlet to my boiler. And he just decided to use enough room, so he made him sideways, which is silly. There, give him more room. All right, so he automatically reverses his direction, and that strainer will also have pressure drop associated with it. So every device I add on is going to have a pressure drop. If I want to add control valves, I can pick two-way or three-way. If I pick two-way, these, these are my choices. For valves this small, I would likely pick a ball valve. So I can put a ball valve on here. Boom. I can pick a three-way valve if I wanted to. Right? Same thing. I got the same kind of choices. I can pick the ball valve in this case. In this case, it's going to give me a dotted line saying, I don't know what you mean, Ryan. So I can actually draw in the bypass line, and then he'll be happy, and he knows what I mean again. And I can obviously mix two-way and three-way. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters for the project, but not for the software. Right? And those will show up in my schedule as well. So ball valves, strainers, I can add on to these guys. Um, you can add in some types of fittings on here, like these coupling-type fittings. I don't believe there's anywhere I can add in like an elbow per se. Um, yeah, I don't really see anywhere for, to pick up an elbow. So the, the, the pipe fitting factor has to accommodate that. 
Uh, if I want to add a relief valve in addition to my boiler, I can do that. I can add um, different types of gauges and so forth. Um, there's air vents I can add onto here. Um, PRV I can add. Backflow prevention, flow meter. I can add temperature gauges if I want to show those on my drawing. And then they'll hence show up my schedule. I want to know the water temperature coming in out of the boiler. Fine, I can add those onto the drawing. I can also add ones with a little lightning bolt on them. That means I want them to be on my BAS. That, that's meaning control on there. If I double click on them, I can see what they're called and I can also see what the control point is going to be. It's going to be an analog output temperature sensor um, for that particular, uh, particular guy. If I was to go look at my equipment schedule now again, uh, I guess I want to open it again. All right, now I got multiple air separators on there, multiple boilers on my drawing. I got neutralizers, multiple, two expansion tanks, I have two systems. I have more fan coils listed than I had before, obviously. Got more pumps listed than I had before. I also have some new tabs. One is for that, that uh, sensor that I added onto the system. There's the two-way valves that I just added on. Um, it defaults them to modulating, but if you wanted them to be two position, you could just manually type that in and change that right here. It doesn't make any difference from the piping standpoint. It only makes the controls difference whether they're um, modulating or whether they're on off only. There's my three-way valves. Same discussion there. It does, if you notice, give me the CV of my pressure my, of my control valve so I can properly select my control valve. If I know the, you know the head loss and the flow rate, I can calculate CV. All he's doing is doing the math for me. All right. Ooh, I don't need that extra pump up there. Check them out there. Uh, other stuff I can draw on here. I can obviously draw chiller plants. I can draw different loads like I had mentioned before. Uh, for example, said we can go in and we could pick, for my load, I could pick an entire swimming pool. Hydronics doesn't care. It's stupid, right? He's just going to say, oh, you got this swimming pool and needs a certain amount of BTUs? Great. You, oh, you got two swimming pools? Great. He doesn't really care. And then I can throw the boiler in and pipe the boiler to the swing pool and life is fine. So I even want to put my swing pool on a boiler. If it's a decent sized product, I probably do. All right, so now I got two swimming pools on a boiler. I can go tell them the loads of, of the pools. I don't know what they would be, but I'll make them up. 200,000 and 300,000. Right now, everything's going to work the same. I can put the pumps on. I can put separators on. I can put a heat exchanger on. If I want. If my boiler can't handle chlorine water, I can put a heat exchanger on there if I need to. Uh, it doesn't really care. Whatever kind of loads I want to put on here. Uh, I can do baseboard loads. We can do... Um, panel radiators, floor radiate, which is symbolized in that fashion. It, what it will not do, the software will not do the radiant floor layout for you, uh, your tube spacing and all of that, and it will not do your geothermal loop field. It just considers those single entity items. Um, so if I double click on this radiant floor, he just thinks it's one big giant radiator, which it is, but he's not, he's not going to tell you the individual piping needed for the, for the radiant floor. We have other radiant tools we use to design that. Um, same thing on the source side, if I was to pick, uh, what do I want to pick? What else we got here? Snow melt system looks very similar to radiant floor, obviously. Um, under cooling, I could pick a chilled beam. That's something unique you might see. Or any one of these guys I can pick on there. Um, if I have a water-cooled chiller, that sure will give me four piping connections, right? Let's give ourselves some more room to play. Four piping connections for both the cooling tower and the condenser water. Uh, cool, excuse me, cooling tower, condenser water, and the chilled water. So I can pick my cooling tower. I'll pick a cross-flow cooling tower. Great. And obviously my pipes got to be connected. I did not mean to connect that there. And 
then on the chill water side, I can go out and connect to my fan coils. All right, it's even telling you when you click on something, this is the evaporator out. If I was to do the other one, it's evaporator in. So if you don't, if you're not sure, it'll tell you all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> if there's anything specific anybody wants me to draw on here, uh, go ahead and punch it in on the question box, and I'll try to do it. Um, by the way, if you've got multiple pumps, here, let's draw a quick loop on here. Um, there's my building loop on this chiller. So let's keep it simple. Oops, that was not simple. And if you want to put pumps in parallel, right? So let's say I put one pump on here. Uh, let's do a horizontal frame mounted pump. quite as nice as it could. Here, let's do it this way. It'll be easier if we just do a horizontal inline pump. Vertical inline pump. All right, and then if I got a second one of these guys and I want them to be in parallel, by default what the software is going to want to do huh, not mean to click on that. Let's just put a fan coil on here just to get some kind of load. It's a big chill beam fan coil, but that's fine. Let's just put on here. All right, so I got these two pumps on here. The whole system requires 125 tons of cooling and 598 GPM. Each one of these pumps just got sized for 598. If I want redundancy, that's fine. If I want them to each carry 50% of the load, all I have to do is go on to each one of these guys, and where it says flow portion, tell it 50%. Boom. Boom. So now these guys are going to work together to get the desired flow rate that's needed. So a lot of times you'll have pumps in parallel, you'll have it set up like that, or sometimes you'll have three of them, right? And they want two of them to be running, and one of them to be a standby pump, right? And then lead lag them and all that stuff. So I would size all three of them for 50%. Right? So two of them will be running together, one of them will be waiting. So each one of them has to carry 50% of the load. <clears throat> it's quite, quite easy to do like that. Same thing with chillers. Um, this chiller is assuming I'm going to do 100% of the load, but if I had two chillers in parallel, I can go in and tell each one of them to only handle 50%. Same thing on the boilers, same thing on the cooling towers. Uh, any of the source uh, generating type items can do it that way. Um, what other questions do people have? Does anybody want to type anything in? All right, let's see if there's anything else we want to draw on here real quick, and then we'll see if there's any questions, and then we'll be kind of getting close to wrapping up. Uh, if you want to draw all of your balancing valves in, you can do that. Let's see. Balancing valves. Should be this guy right here. Uh, so I've got a couple of different choices of balancing valves uh, that I can pick from. Let's just pick a regular balancing valve right now, and I can put those onto my drawing. Oh. That guy, which I wouldn't need one there, right? Because this is a uh, <clears throat> rock return system. I can put those balancing valves in, and I can click on each one of those guys uh, and have it calculate its size needed, depending on which fan coils it is related to. So those you can add on quite easily. Um, what other devices would you guys want to add on? <coughs> uh, manual air vents, if you want to add those. Uh, you can pick a specific manufacturer or you can pick a generic one. In generic, you can pick automatic or manual, and you can put those out on devices too. Maybe you want one by the expansion tank or whatever it is, um, and you can always zoom in and see those guys if they're kind of tiny right, and see what they have going on. All right, well, if there's no further questions, I guess I'll turn you guys loose. This webinar was recorded, so if you want to go back and watch it later, you can certainly do so, or you can have a coworker go back and watch it. And like I said, the other thing is on the HVAC Solutions website, you go on there and you click on Tutorials. There are a bunch of videos that you can use to figure out how to draw different things. Right? So if you go here, get started, and click on it, it'll show you a bunch of videos um, that you can watch that are related to just the basics of using this particular software tool. Right there, there's one, two, three, four different videos you can watch. And each one of these other topics 
uh, has something similar, advanced topics, equipment selection, tips and tricks, hydronic stuff, etc. So you can go watch any of those if you need more information as well. All right, um, with that, we are all wrapped up. Uh, my contact info is up on the screen if anybody wants to send me an email or call me later if they need something. Um, <clears throat> we have another question. Um, Tony asks uh, if he needs a customer login info, uh, and the answer to that is no um, for both the software and the, and the tutorials. Um, the, the tutorials um, are on the hvasolution.com website, and you can just go on there and you can you know, watch any of the videos that you want. There's no login required. And then the actual software you can download for free from the MultiAqua website, which is right here, MultiAqua.com. And in both cases, you do not need a customer uh, login info of any sort. You can just go do it. All right. I thank you guys for your time. And if you have any further questions, uh, just go ahead and, and reach out to me, and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you guys for your time.